Hi, everyone. Today is August 11th, 2022. We're going to be discussing the Inflation Reduction Act and all of the incentives for clean energy and how you might add clean energy as a hot slice to your own investment strategy. The best ways to do it, things to watch out for, etc. We'll be getting started momentarily. I'll see you then. All right, so thanks for joining me today. We're gonna to be talking about clean energy, the Inflation Reduction Act, and ways that you can add this to your portfolio um, that are easier to do and things you might wanna avoid. So red flags and green lights, basically. So let's get started. And I do want to refer you to our um, most recent blog on the topic. So if you go to nataliepace.com forward slash blog, you're gonna see the blog, Clean Energy Gets a Green Light. A lot of this information is here. If you would like a stock report card, I'm happy to send it over. But in here, we talk about, you know, some of the provisions of the plan, how it's going to affect solar, how it's going to affect wind, um, other things like even regenerative agriculture, and of course, energy efficiency um, and electric vehicles. So the bottom line is I just wanna give you a few names to think about, those of you that are comfortable with individual companies. Remember that if you're going to do money while you sleep, then individual companies are not a good match because you do have to babysit them. We've had two quarters of a contraction. We have high inflation. We have high debt. We have you know, wars in the world. There's a great deal of uncertainty. And while we have had you know, the bear market start and then a, a mini rally in there, um, it, there's still a lot of things that could impact the markets negatively. Um, it's not uncommon to have you know, uh, a plunge of you know, into the bear market and then have a little rally and then have more weakness and then another rally. That's actually how it goes. I always call recessions a series of unfortunate events. So that's why you don't want to do market timing. However, as I've said in many of our conferences, we are overweighting safe. So if you are 30, then you always wanna keep a percent equal to age safe. If you're overweighting safe, you might consider another 10 or 20%, pretend you're 40 or 50 and vice versa. What that does is that limits the amount that you might lose in the downturn and it provides you with the liquidity to buy low. It also keeps the pie chart format, um, allows it to do its work for you. So when the slices get big because we've had a nice rally or something has really happened, as we talked about in that blog and I've talked about on Twitter, you know, clean energy, some of these companies that we're gonna be mentioning are up 45% already, some even more than that. Um, so, you know, how do you play that if you think that we were experiencing weakness and all of a sudden you have a clean energy slice that's gone, you know, into two slices or a slice and a half? Well, we do absolutely encourage regular rebalancing, regular meaning maybe even three times a year. Also, letting the markets tell you if it's a good rebalancing moment. If you see that your cryptocurrency has become four slices instead of one, it's begging you to sell high and trim it back to a slice. If you see that it, you have, then, by the way, if you have a slice that goes down to half a slice or a quarter of a slice, you have all that liquidity to buy low and you have the emotional fortitude and you have the prompt from the pie chart. So I do strongly encourage people to use the pie chart system. And if you choose to do individual stocks, remember those are things you really have to babysit because they could get really popular, become a meme stock, shoot the moon, fall to earth. All of these things can happen in there. So let's take a look at a few individual companies and what they're doing. The first one that I want to share with you is called DACWO. So I like to go to the um, money site of msn.com. So if we go there and we just put in um, DQ, there's a couple of really important economic indicators that I think are going to be exciting for you. The first one is that this is a company 
that is experiencing extraordinary growth. So if we look on the growth tab here, and it would be the same if you went to the earnings report, the year over year revenue growth is 182%. That is extraordinary. Now, I'm gonna show you one other thing about this. So we've got that 182% year over year and look at the price earnings ratio, three. Now I have to tell you, it is rare when I see that low of a price earnings ratio with that high of sales growth. So if you want to know what DACWO does, they provide polysilicon. So they are getting polysilicon prices are elevated, demand for solar, thus demand for polysilicon is elevated. And so that is why, and they've increased factories, they've increased production, that is why they are expected to have an extraordinary year. And um, it's because the, you know, China had become unfavorable, dragging down Dakwa with some of the other companies, even though this is a company that is doing quite well. So if you're willing to take on higher risk for higher gain in one company, then this one might be fun for you uh, to either do with education or fund money or to start learning how to babysit. Now, one other thing I wanna share with you is that it was $32 a share. So this one is one that's more than doubled. And by the way, that wasn't very long ago that it was $32 a share. You can see it was right about in there. It was that pretty close to that low. And that was just in March. Uh, again, we got that low pretty close to that in May. So. I've been looking at, in my stock report cards, the three-year average, and this is one that's been as high as 124. So if you were just looking on the 52-week range, then you might not be that excited because you might say, ah, that's just not much of a window of opportunity. But if you look at its three-year range, then it does look more exciting, especially when you combine that with that low price earnings ratio and that extremely high sales growth. Now, again, solar is something that's getting the bulk of the clean energy orders in the United States, a lot of orders in China, a lot of orders in Europe. Now, you can learn more about some of those things in another blog that I have. So the most recent blog is Clean Energy Gets a Green Light, and it's about the Inflation Reduction Act. But if you scroll to the bottom of this blog, what you will see is that I have all of the other more recent blogs as well. So you might wanna go ahead and click on Daquo Doubles, Solar Shines. And in there, you're going to see some of the other global energy product uh, projects that are playing into this push for solar. So here's another solar company. I'll go ahead and put in something like Sun Power. And this does this company does rooftop solar. So they're at 25, and earlier this year they were at, um, you know, almost 13. So here's another one that's almost doubled. And again, if you look at the analysis on it, then you're going to see that the growth is really strong, 60% year-over-year sales growth. That's very very good. Now the current PE looks high because. This is a company that was cash negative. So that, that is one of the things that we want to be aware of is that clean energy companies, some of them can be cash negative. So you might then wanna start looking at the price to sales ratio to make sure you're buying it for a good price. But what we've seen with SunPower at least more recently is that it has been swinging between a low of about 15 or even 12 and a high of about 35. Now, if it continues to see extreme good growth, then you know it could of course break through that 35 ceiling. So again, if we go back to the blog, I do talk about uh, sun power in the blog. So let's go ahead and see some of the things that we've said here about sun power. So according to the CEO, Homeowners are buying rooftops for many reasons. Uh, part of it is to save on their utility bill, to be part of the climate solution, and for peace of mind if the grid fails. That's also playing into a new product they have, 
a sun vault energy storage systems. Now, the reason that energy storage had been prohibitive before, it wasn't that they weren't good, they were just very expensive. But when people see you know, the grid failing in Texas or they see rolling brownouts in California, then they become more interested in wanting to protect um, the integrity of their own home's energy system. And so they're seeing, I believe even up to 20% of their solar sales are also opting in for this new sun vault. And that could be very positive for them. So let's roll over to wind energy. And there what we're seeing is that, you know, a lot of the companies like uh, American Superconductor and TPI Composites, you know, they are, um, the wind component is increasing, but they might be selling other things that are not. So AMSC, their revenue was down uh, almost 11% year over year. Um, you know, TPI Composites was flat. Another problem and tailwinds for the business is that they are suffering from not able to get the parts and the mater raw materials they need in order to meet their backlog and their demand. And so that is impacting their revenue. So wind may be, whereas we're seeing homeowners do the push into solar, even before government funding takes solar, could take solar even further. What we're, we're not seeing that with wind because it's rare, more rare for homeowners to do their own windmill, right? That is something like usually we're seeing offshore projects, onshore projects, big things. And it does take, it does have a ramp up from whenever the Inflation Reduction Act finally gets passed uh, in final by the House and then um, signed into law by President Biden. Um, that could even have another six to nine months before these big projects really get the green light. So I would have some of these companies like TPIC and American Superconductor. You could have even think about Gamesa and Vestas uh, out of Denmark. Uh, again, these are uh, trading off the board, so they do become a little bit more difficult unless you're a sophisticated investor. Now, um, I would do encourage people to read about regenerative farming and healthy soil also about energy efficiency. Um, and the reason for that is that these are ways that you can actually benefit your community, heal our planet, and sometimes even save tens of thousands of dollars in your own budget annually with smarter energy choices. So there is an entire chapter in the ABCs of Money, a fifth edition, devoted to helping you save money with smarter energy choices. And it can be a big payday. And sometimes you're investing in an on-off switch or a timer or insulating better, or even um, using curtains to block sunlight. So there are many things you can do that are actually extremely low cost and are gonna help us to make ends meet. Now, you know, boomers are not having as much trouble as millennials and Gen Z, but it is important because you wanna think about you know, family wealth and stop making everybody else rich in the family, keeping the money in the family. So even if you feel like you've got your budget working just fine, it might be a good idea to share some of these life hacks with your kids or, you know, with the younger generation. And certainly for those of you that are millennials, Gen Z listening to this, this is going to help life add up. It's going to help you have more fun. It's going to help you have more money for bucket list vacations or save up for that first house, which I wouldn't encourage you to buy right now with home prices at an all time high. So those are a couple of things. And even thinking about uh, regenerative farming in your community, this is Co uh, Compton Community Gardens. They live in a food desert and they came together, uh, turned a vacant lot into a place where people could grow their own food. So that small box can feed a family of four for six months. It costs $50 for each six months because it is community focused. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you about this are clean energy funds. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that the ESG funds are missing E. So we looked into the ESG fund, the ESG index, the Standard & Poor's S&P Global uh, ESG index, and there really aren't any environment companies in there. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of oil and plastic and fossil fuels. So I would say that ESG is actually missing the E. And if you would like to get a, a shot of clean energy into your portfolio, 
What you want to think about instead is a clean energy, targeted clean energy funds. Now, the second caveat is that I am doing a credit rating on the fund company itself because we know that over half of the S&P 500 is at or near junk bond status. So there's a lot of fund companies that are not credit worthy and those companies can become the most vulnerable if the markets head south. They can go farther, faster, stay there, not recover as well, all of those things. So I do encourage you to do that. And that leads me over to iShares Clean Energy Fund. I'll show you how easy it is to find that. All you have to do is put in iShares.com. And then you could just do a search on clean energy right there at the top and see what comes up. So the first thing that comes up is the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF, ICLN. And if we wanna double check and just make sure that we are indeed getting clean energy and they're not calling something clean that we wouldn't think is clean, simply click on the holdings right there. And what you're gonna see is even if you don't understand all of these, there's a lot of solar in there. And if you showed all of them, you're even going to run into a lot more wind. And there's Daquo, uh, Gamesa is in there. Uh, you're probably going to find the other one, Vestas, that we mentioned, Jinko Solar. So this is a fund that targets clean energy. And again, if you want to just add that to your money while you sleep portfolio, then get a clean energy ETF. You can also get it on PowerShares. The credit rating is just a little lower for Invesco. So let me show you one last quick thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and answer a question that was emailed to us. Um, remember, you can email info at nataliepace.com and just tell us what it is that you want us to look into. What, what would you like our next video conference to cover? And, you know, we, we will definitely take it under consideration. And we may even already have something that answers your question. So again, info at nataliepace.com to, you know, submit questions and uh, hot stocks you think are super hot or things you think other people should be aware of, scams, anything at all that you might be interested in. Info at nataliepace.com. All right, so other ways that you can reach us are through our social media channel channels. If you're more of a Facebook person, click on the Facebook icon and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, that's our email, um, YouTube in order to watch these video conferences back. And of course, the Apple podcast, you just click on that if you're somebody that maybe does have a bit of a commute or you like to listen maybe while you're doing something else. Okay, so I wanted to take you into one last thing about the pie charts. So at nataliepace.com, what you'll see here is a little tab there that says, try our free five minute nest egg pie chart and thrive budget web apps. You can click on that and then follow the instructions and you will be emailed your, your links to those free web apps. You can personalize your own. If you have any troubles, email info at nataliepace.com. And again, we are overweighting 20% safe. So if you put in the numbers of how much you have in your nest egg and all of the things, this just three questions, it takes about five minutes to answer it. It will personalize and say, hey, this is how much you should have safe in dollar amounts. And then this is how much you should have in each of our 10 slices. And it gives you an exact dollar amount. So that gives you something to go from. Uh, should you just go ahead and buy an entire slice of clean energy right now if you don't have it? Well, let's think about that. First of all, let's look at it. And you can actually go to and put that one in. Put in ICLN on MSN or your favorite money website. And here we see that it's at 23. The low was 16, the high was 26. So it feels like it's high on the uh, 52 week. But remember, I'm suggesting we go back to the pandemic recession low, which was $8.70. So it tells you it can go lower and it, to the high, which was 33. So you might say, well, 
you know, it's not as low as it went in the pandemic and it's not as high as it went, you know, by January of um, 2021. So maybe what I do, let's say that your pie chart comes back and says you have 10,000 to put in each slice or 100,000 or a million. You might want to, instead of just going ahead and slamming in on an entire slice because you just heard of this, you might think about, well, maybe what I want to do is just going up to my knees. Maybe I'll start right now, put in three or 4,000 of 10,000 slice, or, you know, again, 30, 40% of whatever your slice should be. I'll look at it again at my next rebalancing, which I'm going to set at maybe the end of September. At the end of September, if the price has gone a lot lower, you're going to be glad you didn't fill up the whole slice. And if it goes skinnier and you still have all this slice to fill up, you can buy more at a lower price. And it's up to you whether you want to go ahead and fill up the entire slice at that time or not. Again, remember that uh, recessions are a series of unfortunate events. We haven't yet been identified as in a recession. Uh, certainly the cues from the Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve Board is that they do not want the NBER to declare us in a recession, but they don't get to say that, right? The NBER gets to say that. So um, they're not going to be in a rush. They're going to want to see the, num the revisions of the numbers. So we're going to see two more revisions. Uh, here we are in August. We're going to have another one at the end of August, another one at the end of September. And then we will see the third quarter at the end of October. So we could have uh, a more interesting summer. It looked bad before we got this GDP report that was another negative, which usually means a recession. But now that people are saying, ah, maybe it's not a recession, they're not freaking out yet. So again, your best bet is not to try to market time and say, oh, I don't think they're gonna freak out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go gangbusters. It always keep a percent equal to your age safe. And by the way, in today's world, you have to know what's safe in a debt world because bonds are illiquid and negative yielding and losing money. Money market funds have redemption gates and liquidity fees. Annuities are not FDIC insured. Um, so again, and they may have you know, all kinds of hidden fees that you're not aware of. So you really wanna know what's safe in a debt world. We spend one full day on that in our investor educational retreat. Now, one last thing about that before I answer the question that was submitted earlier. If you're interested in our investor educational retreat, get information, just go to nataliepace.com, click on the banner ad, and then you can get all kinds of information, what you're going to learn, testimonials, pricing, hours, all of that. So do get that there. Now, one other thing that's gonna happen is that the minute you register, you are going to qualify for our four-part webinar series that talks about what's safe. So if you don't know whether or not you're safe now, that four-part free webinar that accompanies the registration for the retreat is yours immediately. And you can read that, you can look into that. If you need additional support, we do offer private coaching. So you do not have to wait until October when we have the retreat in order to start your learning, in order to start getting safe protected, hot, and diversified. All right, so again, clean energy could be a hot slice, could be two hot slices. Now, one question that was emailed in was, this person was interested in a particular company that she thought was probably a clean energy. It's called Darling Ingredients Incorporated. And um, let's just look at their website. So if we just go to their home page, it says we create solutions that sustain life. And that sounds very sustainable. And it sounds very, very green. But what I'm going to encourage you to do, if you are truly interested in healing the planet and in sustainable practices, I, I strongly encourage you to read The Power of 8 Billion. It's up to us. That is my most free, uh, recent book. I've spent 20 years traveling the globe, being educated from, you know, the former governor of Colorado, the Prince of Wales, um, organic support team, um, you know, Compton Community Gardens, uh, volunteers, um, you know, uh, Leon Creer, who designed Poundry in uh, England, all over the planet, Peru, India. Um, and I have 
basically distilled all of this wisdom on sustainability. Top level sources, Earth Day Network, in fact, Kathleen Rogers, the president, wrote the foreword to the power of 8 billion, it's up to us, NRDC information, a lot of different information from reputable data sources that aggregate data and then give us the information we need to truly be sustainable. So go to nataliepace.com, click on the power of 8 billion, it's up to us, book cover, there you can either get the print edition or the ebook. The ebook is going to be extremely affordable. Uh, the print edition is a little bit more because we're encouraging you to not do um, you know, the, the print edition. Of course, if you want to do it, you can. There's an audio version as well. Now that brings me back to Darling. So Darling sounds, sounds Darling, but not as Darling as you might think. And that is because the company does not incorporate regenerative agriculture. What they're doing is they are taking a lot of byproducts and they are resourcing them. So in theory, that sounds pretty good. But in a world where our rainforests are being stripped for industrialized meat farming, and there's, believe me, um, livestock is an important part of regenerative agriculture. So I'm not asking you to go vegan. What I'm saying is, you need to understand the difference between industrialized farming and livestock that leaches the soil and throws topsoil into the air and releases carbon and regenerative agriculture that actually can be a carbon sequestration, pull carbon out of the atmosphere and uh, can be a part, an important part of healing our planet. So, in my view, Darling is not Darling because it is not into regenerative agricultural practices. It's repurposing part of the problem, which is industrialized agricultural practices. So for me, it's a non-starter. For you, if you want us to look into it, great. But I do encourage you first to become informed by looking at the power of 8 billion, it is up to us. Now I'm gonna stop here um, so that, uh, you know, if anybody that's on the call wants to say something, we can. Uh, if we of course want to have, a, have more of a discussion that is recorded, we can always press uh, record. Okay, gang, so again, you can listen back on my Apple podcast. You can rewatch and share uh, Apple Podcast, as well as youtube.com forward slash Natalie Pace. And um, this is something that could be fun. Now, listen, our rebalancing has allowed people who've been in clean energy before to sell at that beautiful high of about 35 and then buy more low, you know, when it hits the 16. So again, your rebalancing session is exactly when you can actually capture gains or buy low. So it is a buy low, sell high plan on autopilot. Your brokerage statements are actually, um, even though they're very informative, they can prompt you to do the wrong thing. They can often put you on the wrong side of the trade. So we always recommend that when you are rebalancing that you put your holdings off of the brokerage statement and into an Excel file in, uh, add in any cryptocurrency, any um, you know, uh, retirement plan holdings, uh, checking, savings, annuity, invested insurance, any other liquid assets that you have in that total for your pie chart. And then you have uh, mock up that sample pie chart and you compare apples to apples. The slices are too large, it's screaming sell high. Slices that are too small, buy low. Now, one thing I might do is I might buy a little. I wouldn't necessarily just fill up the whole slice. I might say, you know what, I'm going to look at it again at the end of September. So there are strategic rebalancing moments. And again, that's also something we discussed at the retreat. Or, you know, you can ask those questions and maybe we'll have a, a video conference just on rebalancing next time. So again, this is Natalie Pace. And thank you for joining me and have a wonderful August, a great summer. And um, just know that this pie chart system works, especially in volatile times, works great. Buy and hold doesn't work as great. It, we did have a, a pandemic recession where everything came back very fast, but that's because we printed up $5 trillion and we cut interest rates 
That's not happening this time. We're not printing up more money. In fact, we are uh, belt tightening and uh, we are raising interest rates, right? We're making the, the uh, monetary system tighter. So now is the time when you really have to have good husbandry. And the last two recessions, uh, I mean, the two out of three recessions have been people lost more than half and it took years to come back to even. So that's not a, that's not a strategy. That's riding a Wall Street roller coaster. Modern portfolio theory, true modern portfolio theory, every financial advisor says they do it. But again, I have yet, I do a lot of second opinions. I have yet to see that that's actually in practice, even if no matter what people say. So true modern portfolio theory with proper rebalancing, adding in hots, making sure you keep enough safe and diversified and rebalancing regularly, but not obsessively. That is a strategy that earned gains in the dot-com and the Great Recession and outperformed the bull markets in between. It's easy as a pie chart, so it's less time and less money. And again, register for the October retreat now, and you're going to get the four-part webinar series so you can get started now. Particularly, most important, protect your wealth. Thanks again. Natalie Pace, info at nataliepace.com, nataliepace.com. You can also call us, and that information is on the website as well. Goodbye now.